Hey guys, check it out. We're playing as a custom house. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another very important playthrough on this channel. They all have been asking for this, and I am finally giving in. We're doing a custom house playthrough. Uh, the Targaryen playthrough is on a little bit of a hold while I figure out the bug that is preventing us from moving forward with that. But in the meantime, I figured it'd be a good time to start up a custom house playthrough that y'all have been asking for. And uh, specifically, we're playing in the wake of Aegon the Conqueror's Conquest of Westeros. Aegon's on the Iron Throne. And we are going to play a uh, lord in the Riverlands. And uh, the reason that I selected this and it's particularly, we're going to be in the Stony Sept. We're going to replace House Grey. One, because they're not a super important house. Two, Stony Sept has uh, some important significance in the lore of uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, it's one of the places where uh, King Robert was healed back um, after being wounded in battle um, later on in the, uh, the War of the Usurper. And so it... It bears some significance, lore-wise, but also um, it is strategically situated right here, which is kind of on the corner of the Crownlands, the Westerlands, the Reach, and the Riverlands. And so it's it's very strategic, um, and it'll be it'll be a good spot for us to to grow um, as a regular lord. Um, it's going to be a little bit different to not have. Um, Lots and lots of stuff to command um, and do, um, but I will go through our goals for the playthrough with y'all in just a little bit. We are Sir Valor of House Bear, and that's uh, that's just kind of what I decided to go with with this. I haven't picked our stats yet. We're going to do that in just a second, but I wanted to create our coat of arms, and I've actually never done this before, so uh, stay tuned. Let's see if I can figure something out. Okay, I lied. Um... Coat of arms for the mod are kind of disabled, but they're very limited. Uh, so we'll be working on adding a custom uh, coat of arms before long. Um, but we're not going to do that right now. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to begin to uh, adapt and shift our attributes. Now, this, if you've never done it before, is a balance of age and traits. Um, typically, if you want a really good ruler, they're going to be really old. If you want a young ruler, their traits are not going to be as great. So um, what we really need to do is we need to figure out what traits we need, what balance we need. We're going to be um, unmarried at first. We're not going to have any kids. We're going to attempt to uh, make some alliances and all that kind of stuff. Um, but really, you have to start out with a ruler that is not as great in order to um, have a ruler that can kind of accomplish the things that you want them to. So. We're going to begin by changing our educational um, trait. We're going to um, actually be an incompetent commander. That's going to be the first thing, um, meaning that we took on the martial um, education, and uh, that kind of affects that. I think the base is um, always kind of set to 5, and you can't lower it. And so um, already we're 18. I'm going to be okay if we are... Um, late 20s. I think that that's going to be kind of the most um, that I'd be willing to go. I don't think you can change health or fertility to add life. So we need to balance it with traits. Now this is the list of traits that come up. If the number is red, that means that it adds age to your character. If it is green with a negative in front of it, that obviously means that it takes age away. So obviously, if you really wanted to make, you know, a, a beast of a character, just add inbred, and it, you know, makes everything okay, I suppose. But um, not going to do that. We're not going to add any of these. Uh, we may add some negative traits as we can kind of figure it out, but we're really not going to be able to add any congenital traits in because that'll really negatively affect our age. So we want to add in some good traits that, uh, that don't necessarily um, take away from our character's age. I think more than anything, we are going to... Um, gluttonous may be one that we have to add. Uh, we're going to add Wrath. 
because it actually takes um, takes one year off of our life, ironically. Um, I would say diligent, but that adds 10. We're going to add... Shy may be a good one to help kind of balance. Arbitrary, we're not going to add. Cynical, we can add. Hmm. We can add cynical and trusting. And here we start to get into some of the. Uh, see, Brawny's a great trait, but uh, we need to we need to try to get that into our. Uh, let's add trained fighter since we kind of had some traits that went down that gives us a, at least a little bit of um, a boost to the martial trait um, we can add just kind of scrolling through here to get a, a really good idea uh, on the front end of what we can add that would kind of make us um, We need to add the house customizer trait. That'll allow us to kind of customize our house later on. Let's see. Okay, so that first pass, we ended up with Roth, Cynical, Trusting, and Trained Fighter. And we're still only 17 years old, so that's a pretty good balance so far. Um, I don't want to add... I don't want to add Lunatic or Possess. I don't want us to be maimed. That'll kind of add our, or that'll kind of change up our, um, our approach early on. We're not adding quicker genius or strong. We, these are all, um, these are all lifestyle traits that we can get later on. Let's actually add, uh, lustful. Because that'll add fertility and that'll help us have, uh, lots of children. Uh, how are our stats doing? We have a fertility of 70. That's actually a pretty good fertility. Stewardship is 5. Marshall's still only 10. A marshal's going to increase because income to commander is going to change as we command armies. And we're going to have the opportunity to grow as a commander. Um, and so I'm not really worried about that. Learning being 5 is fine. Intrigue being fi 5 is okay. I wonder if we can add anything to change up stewardship and intrigue. Those are the two that I want to focus on right now. Um, charitable would add diplomacy. Greedy, no. Temperate? Let's add temperate. That puts us at 21. That bumps our stewardship up to 7. Diligent adds 10. I wonder what Ambitious adds. It also adds 10. I want our Diplomacy to kind of stay put. So if I added Deceitful, it would boost Intrigue, but it would, it would uh, drop down um, Diplomacy. Envious... Um, humble would be a good one only for the opinion modifier, but it's not worth adding 10 years to the life. Um, all these that add 10 just aren't. We could add just, and that would boost stewardship and learning. And that would put us right at 29. And then we could actually add Shy, and that would put us at, at 27. Three Diplomacy is not great. Hmm. 
Hmm. And 29 is actually okay. That gives us a little bit of... Uh, that gives us a little bit of time to have children. We're lustful, so we have pretty good fertility. We can find a good... Um, a nice alliance early on. And then we can also have, you know, lots of children. Um, because we're really, we're not going to be in war right away. The realm's kind of at peace. Dorne hasn't been conquested yet, but the realm's kind of at peace. And so I don't really need to worry about leading armies too terribly early. Okay, I think I, I think I like this. I think I like where we're at with this. So, we are Sir Valor of House Bear. We are a incompetent commander. We're wroth and cynical, trusting, lustful, temperate, and just, and we are a trained fighter. And so as soon as we kind of begin the playthrough, we'll kind of go and get the pop-up for the house customizer trait. So, let's hit finish, and let's jump in. Okay, so here we are. We are in um, the... Uh, the Riverlands right now, the Trident, um, under the rule of the Tullys, Lord Paramount Edmund Tully. And uh, you can see we're actually using the CPR Plus mod uh, for our portraitures. And um, I'm actually kind of pleased with how it is so far. I have a couple of bugs, namely, <laughs> this is part of why I don't want to use it for the High Valyrian playthrough. Uh, the eyes of these High Valyrians are just really creepy. And I, I think it's something that I'm missing along the line. Um, but I'm really, uh, I'm really happy we're not playing High Valyria in this, this playthrough. So, anyways, that's, a that's kind of why the, the portraits look different than the other, uh, playthrough. But yeah, we are Sir Valor of the Stony Sept and, um, House Bear. And I'm really excited to get, get going with this. I'm gonna kind of have, a, a breakdown of our goals here in just a little bit. But I want to kind of give everything situated first. Um, first of all, we're going to pick a focus. And our focus is actually going to be Seduction. And the reason for that is we're gonna we're gonna try pretty quickly um, to uh, produce some children. So the fertility is nice. We could do family um, and increase diplomacy, but I want to also maybe produce a couple bastards along the line and use uh, seduction to kind of advance our our station in the trident. So also uh, for ambition, I want us to um, have one that gives us a good. Um, has, has a good reward for, for successfully completing it. Um, I would like to... We can gain one marshal by becoming Master at Arms. We don't really have a, a high marshal right now. So that would be kind of a lofty goal. I think if we take one lover, we get one diplomacy, and that'll help us, because our diplomacy is not super high. So, um, I think that's what we'll do, is we'll, we'll try to, to have a lover that kind of fits in with our seduction focus. We need to decide upon our council. And uh, basically, this is just going to be like uh, whoever is the best available. Um, so, I, I guess this guy's name is pronounced Hybald or Hibbled. Gray, Lord Treasurer right here, Stefan Gray, Spymaster right here, Ben Frey, um, Court Physician is Benedict, and Priest is Ellard. And so for minor titles, we're going to, we're not going to designate a Regent right now. Um, I'm sure that we're going to get a pop-up asking about it, but we're not going to do it yet. And I'm just going to gradually go through and select these guys. It's easier as a small house to make these decisions because you just want people to like you. And so you don't really have to worry about anything there. Um, Master Aaron and then Raymond Gray. Both of them have pretty good martial stats and then myself as well. So we'll auto-assign commanders from now on. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. Our Lieges Council, they don't have a, a Justicar, a court physician, or a priest. Right now the Master at Arms only has a marshal of eight so I wonder we may actually be able to become master at arms our liege is right here in pink maiden um, it is Lord Allen 
of House Piper. And um, I think more than likely we're going to, the first goal that we're going to do is we're going to attempt to take the High Lordship of Acorns Ridge, which is right here. These three uh, counties, Stony Sept, Pink Maiden, and Castlewood. And uh, we're going to do that through claim fabrication and then eventually taking it um, also by becoming um, really close with our main liege, um, the Lord Paramount of the Trident. Uh, so we're going to try to get in pretty good with the Tullys and um, make our way up from there. But yeah, that's the first goal is to um, have the High Lordship become a High Lord of... Um, this area we can either do that by fabricating a claim directly or we can actually do it usurping it if we take one of these counties so if we take the county of Castlewood um, which right now they they have more men than we do um, and also I think their castle is a little bit better than us too the four level is six ours is four yeah so it's it would be tough to do that to take it by force um, but we may be able to do it by gaining favor, that kind of thing. But that's the other option, is fabricating a claim directly or having the majority of titles within that high lordship allows you the opportunity to usurp it yourself. So that is where we're at right now. Currently, um, Aegon has formed the Iron Throne. I'm not sure why his capital is... Um, right there. I guess he hasn't had the decision to make it move it to King's Landing and all that, but it is formed. He's no longer conquering anything. Um, he's no longer making that his priority. Oris Baratheon looks super weird. I think it's that high Valyrian. They don't allow him to have black hair. Oh, he's Westerosi Valyrian. That's that's a little strange. Uh, the, the Tyrells are in the Reach. Uh, Lord Paramount Harlan. The Lannisters are still in the Westerlands. Lord Paramount Loren. The Aarons have the seat in the Vale. An eight-year-old Lord Paramount Ronald of the Vale. And then the king who knelt, Lord Paramount Torrin Stark, is in the north. And so we need to work on making an alliance um, here in the Trident. So that's going to be kind of our one of our first... Um, goals that we'll actually be able to accomplish, but that's goal number two, is to form a strong marriage alliance in the Riverlands. And finally, our third goal, and this is kind of the long-term ultimate goal maybe, um, not necessarily the ultimate goal, but, but something certainly further off than having a marriage, a marriage alliance and getting a high lordship, is to eventually gain enough power in Westeros to branch off and conquer right here tyrosh this is my favorite castle in all of the game it is the castle of the bleeding tower and it's not the main holding because they are a merchant republic but in a feudal system this is the one it's a huge soc fortress it has a base fort level of nine which is ridiculous and a huge levy and garrison um we require a lot of force to take it. It's also um, a island, so there's no way to get to it from land, which means they have a um, any any invading army attempting to siege it down has a um, has a landing penalty, and so their morale is super low to begin with. Um, it's almost impregnable if you can have a, a doom stack stacked up on there. Um, a, a huge army stacked up on top of the the province. It makes it tough for them to land, and also it makes it tough for them to take. Um, so, huge impregnable fortress right there, floating in the ocean. Uh, that would be kind of the, the thing to take. Obviously, we want to stay feudal, um, and then kind of maybe branch over and have our own little dynasty uh, kingdom over here in Essos. Uh, maybe taking some of these southern... Um, not really kingdoms, but empires, uh, merchant republics, that kind of thing, taking over them and making them into feudal um, vassals of our own dynasty and empire right there in Tyrosh. Honey, give it one more chance. Worry